Listen, this video is not going to be soft. So if you cannot take the truth, you do not have to watch. Listen, thousands of so-called Christians are going to hell every single day thinking that they are saved when in reality they are not. In fact, many of you, I mean tons of you guys watching this video right now are lukewarm and you think that you're saved, you think that you know God, you think you got it all together, but you don't. I'm telling you this video you gotta watch because it's gonna change your life. There's a message in a fire that God is stirring up in my heart. I believe he's going to use to help you so much just through this video guys. So make sure you watch this video all the way through. With all that being said, let's get straight into this one. Listen, I'm not holding back. I'm just going to be genuine and real with you guys because look, your life depends on this. And by the way, what you guys just saw, that little clip, that's my Patreon refinement online Discord community, my ministry on here. And I'm just going to say this, if you wanna learn everything that God has taught me in the spiritual side of the things God has imparted me and you want to maybe get closer to God and just so much more, you can join that. If you, a lot of you have been subscribed to the channel for a while and if you've never gotten into my community, you've never gotten into this life-changing ministry that I started on here that's going to become the biggest online ministry in the world, I really believe so. I have full faith. I'm going to leave the link for that for you guys to join in the description and I will pin it in the comments for you guys. It will change your life. I'm just going to leave it at that, okay? So that being said, guys, look. The Lord has been stirring up this message on my heart today just out of nowhere because it's just real. We need to come to the realization that life's short and you could die. You guys could die at any moment. Your next breath could be your last. Your next sin could be your last. There's no time for you to waste time. There's no time for you to just continue to live through the motions of life, to do this, to do that, to live your dreams. No, it's not about you. It never has been. It's no longer that you that lives, but it's Christ that lives in you. Now look, you can't just believe in one part of the Trinity and then neglect the other part. You guys can't just believe in Jesus because you want to be saved and then grieve the Holy Spirit. You can't just believe in Jesus, but then have no relationship with the Father. It doesn't work that way. He talks about the Holy Spirit. He imparted the Holy Spirit to his disciples, and he said, this is eternal life. Listen, he said, this is eternal life. It says this in John, that they know you, the one true God and Christ whom you sent. So it is eternal life to know God and Christ Jesus, right? You have to know Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. But of course, believing in Jesus is what saves us, everything he did on that cross. But if you believe in Jesus and you think you're going to neglect the other parts of the Trinity, you think you're gonna neglect God, it doesn't work that way, friend. Jesus isn't just a ticket, your ticket into heaven, right? Jesus is the one that wants to connect you to the Father. Jesus wants to connect you to the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one that said, strive to enter the narrow gate. A lot of you are like, JJ's preaching a workspace gospel. He's saying your works are what save you. First of all, I don't preach a workspace gospel. I preach a works made gospel because the Bible said one of the reasons you were made was for good works. You're not saved by your good works, but I mean, your good works will save others, right? So good works are the evidence for your faith, right? The Bible says faith without works is dead, right? It says you're justified by your faith, not faith alone, but your faith and your works. Why? Because works are the evidence of your faith. It's scary, but it's true. The Bible clearly makes it very obvious that there's something called dead faith. Faith that believes, but doesn't know God. Faith that believes, but lives in sin. Faith that believes, but has no relationship with God. Faith that believes, but doesn't go after God and isn't in the will of the Father. This is called 
dead faith, right? So there is a difference between living faith and active faith and dead faith, right? Faith is not a one-time assurance. It's a daily occurrence. Faith should be active, actively living in you. Faith is not the last step. It's the first step. The man on the cross that died never had the chance to get to know God in the way that we do, right? But God saved him because he knew his what? His heart. God knows your heart. He knows if you really love him. He knows if you truly care about him. He knows, right? Because the Bible makes it clear that there can be faith, but if there's no love, the faith is faith is pointless. You can believe in Jesus, but here's what the Bible says. Even the demons believe and tremble. What do you do? There's faith that believes that doesn't love. And if you don't love God, then you're just like the devil. You just believe in God. Congratulations, you believe. Now what? You have to love Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. To say that faith is the only answer and the only way, right? Then there's no need for the entire New Testament because we just can believe and then go to heaven. All the instructions, all the commandments, all that other stuff that we have to follow up with and keep having a relationship with God, why don't we just set that aside? If that's just a preference, right? If the word of God is just something you should do, but not something you have to do, then, hmm, you see what I'm saying? So God says, it says inside the Bible, if you don't love God, right? If you don't love him, what is your faith worth? Nothing. That faith is not going to save you when you face him one day on Judgment Day, right? Many will come to me in my name. This is what he says, saying, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons in your name, prophesy in your name, do all these wonders and miracles in your name? And he'll say to them, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. Now, Jesus is not saying here that because you did works, because you did works, you're not saved. He's saying that you skipped the part of love. You just did works because you thought, you know, works, I did works for you, so I'm gonna be saved. He's not saying don't do works. He's saying your works weren't rooted in love. They were rooted in your selfish ambition to use me as a ticket to get into heaven, okay? So this is totally different. He says, depart from me, I never knew you, indicating they didn't have a relationship with God, right? He said, you who practice lawlessness, indicating that they did works, right, but they also sinned. So listen, the Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 30, it's a commandment for you to repent. Such times of ignorance were overlooked. Now God commands all men everywhere to repent. God commands us to repent. Jesus preached everywhere he went, repent, right? And it's not just a mind change. It's, I know that the word means mind changed, but doesn't mind change cause you to live differently? If you're living in sin, that's the evidence that your mind hasn't been changed. You haven't repented. But if you're living in righteousness and you're repenting from your sins, you're turning away from that evil, right? That shows that you've repented. That shows that there, there's been a mind change. Now check out what the Bible says right here. This is what Paul says, okay? This is what Paul says, Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? Certainly not, What's an exclamation point. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many as us, right, us, as we're baptized into Christ Jesus, we're baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, Paul's saying you have to die, right, in order to live, you have to die to yourself, Certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. So Paul says, shall we go on sinning? And then he says, certainly not. No, we are not called to go on sinning. In fact, in Hebrews 10, it says, if you continue to sin, there no longer remains a sacrifice for you, but a fiery expectation. So God says there's such a thing as dead faith, right? 
And this is what I'm warning you guys of today. It says God is going to spit out Luke the lukewarm, right? The people who left their first love, the people who claimed to know him, did works for him, maybe not even the people who did works for him, also just the people who believed but didn't care about God. This is the lukewarm people. And a lot of you guys are claiming to follow Jesus. You're claiming to know Jesus. You're claiming to love Jesus. You go to church on Sundays. You got a cute Instagram verse in your bio, right? You got Christian parents, right? And and you say, I believe in Jesus, but your life does not reflect that at all. You're living in sin. You are addicted to those websites. You're addicted to scrolling. You're addicted to video games. You're watching and entertaining yourself with all this demonic garbage on your TV. You're playing things full of sexual morality and witchcraft and sorcery, and it must end. You can't say you love God and then hate what God loves and love what he hates. If that is you, you're lukewarm, okay? A lot of you claim to love God, but when I look at you, I'm like, you don't love God. Your life doesn't prove you love God at all. Your life should be a reflection of Jesus, right? Your life should be a reflection of Jesus. It shouldn't be a reflection of the devil, a reflection of the world. The Bible says, right, and it says this, this is, and by the way, the whole New Testament these are the epistles to believers. It says, he who makes himself a friend of this world makes himself an enemy of God. It says that in James 4. So if you friend the world, you're an enemy of God. It says you cannot, right? It says do not love the things of this world, right? If you love the things of this world and um, God, it doesn't work that way, right? 1 John 2.15. Do not love the world and the things of this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of God is not in them. So if you love the things of this world, the love of God is not in you. That is why I'm always preaching against all this garbage and things, the things of this world, watching, entertain yourself with what God despises. Guys, because this stuff is going to cause you to have a greater love for the world than love for God. It must end. You guys must start to actually seek God, have a real relationship with Him, pour out your heart before Him, go to Him first. Don't stop idolizing your phone, stop idolizing TikTok, stop idolizing all these other things a lot of you think you're saved you're not you're headed to hell you using Jesus as a ticket you're not making him a target and I'm warning you today that God is not okay with that and he wants you to be saved and you are going to face him one day on judgment day and this may be the very thing that that testifies against you those video games that controller might testify against you right your tv might testify against you that girl might testify against you that guy might testify against you those friends right you're not going to have an excuse the bible says man is without an excuse right man is without an excuse so you're going to face god one day and he's going to look at you and say Depart from me, I never knew you. Is he going to say that to you? Or is he going to say, well done, good and faithful servant? Is a faithful servant not one who does the work of his master? You guys can't continue to live your life doing the work of Satan and the work of God. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. For you either hate one or love one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and man. So make your choice today. Are you going to choose to surrender God to God, to repent from all your sin, all your evil, all the wickedness that you're participating with? Are you going to really have a relationship with God where you draw near to Him and He draws near to you? Yes, whoever confesses Jesus is Lord will be saved. It doesn't say whoever confessed. It's not past tense, it's present tense. Is your life a confession of Jesus being Lord? And when you say Jesus is your Lord, then you're saying Jesus is everything and He is the person that I want to be like. Or is Satan your Lord? What is your life confessing? Because actions speak louder than words. The Bible makes that clear. Words have power, but there must be actions behind your words. So who are you serving? I'm here to challenge you today, friend. God is calling you to pick up your cross. The Bible says whoever wants to come after me, Jesus said this, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Don't play with this thing, man. You, a lot of you think that just because you believe, you're saved, but you don't care about God. He knows your heart. And you're going to be judged for your heart posture one day behind everything you do. The Bible makes that clear. So repent today. Make Jesus your Lord today and go after him with all of your heart in Jesus' name. Look, in conclusion, you can't work your way into heaven, but you can rebel your way into hell. When you use Jesus as a vending machine, 
and you believe, but you don't want nothing to do with him, you don't love him, you don't care about him, you're living in a wicked lifestyle, you're no different than the type of person that's a player, right? You're just an, a player, basically. You're somebody that only likes a person for their body, but you don't like them for who they are. That's exactly the way you guys are treating God, by using him as your little ticket in to heaven. He loves you and he wants to save you, but he's not going to put up with that. Mark my words. One day you will face him. A lot of you are going to call me Mr. Workspace Gospel Preacher JJ out here who I'm not even preaching a Workspace Gospel. I'm preaching the Bible and a lot of you are going to hate me for this, but it's just true. It's the way it is and God wants to have a relationship with you. It's, a, it's the main reason why he created you. So it's time for you to, to get off the couch, to get off the, the social media stuff that's become a distraction in your mind to get out of the idolatry and to get into his presence, to pour out your heart before him and get to know him personally and fall in love with him. It's a relationship with Jesus that will save you at the end of the day, right? Because that's that's act of faith. That's faith mixed together with love, right? If you don't have a relationship with God, then you, I mean, you're, you're serving the devil. You're just living through the motions of life in the world. So with all that being said, that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. But look, if you like this type of content, you actually are on fire for God and you want to support this ministry hey you can join my patreon refinement again discord community the the my community on here my ministry guys again mark my words i believe it will become the biggest christian community in the world we're training people to become leaders we are helping you find your calling your anointing your gifts maybe some of you are called to art prophets apostles pastors teachers some of you are called to be social media influencers i got a whole course for you on there and i'm going to be personally connecting with you and training you so you can make videos like this and go viral for jesus okay i've had success on every platform I've done this on, not saying that to brag, but I get to boast in Christ because I'm doing the work of God. So there's a lot to it, guys. It's not just the editing stuff. You gotta learn to know God. A lot of you don't know how to pray. You don't know how to have a real relationship with God. You don't know where to start. I got you. If you get in here, I'm gonna train you and help you guys best I can in every way I can. And it's $7.99 a month. It's $8 a month. Um, a lot of you be like, he's, he's trying to sell the gospel. No, I preach the gospel for free. All my content out there is for free. This is for me to be able to personally disciple you guys and connect with you and teach you how to go viral for Jesus and so much more. This is access to a whole community. It's going to be great for you. So if you want to get in, guys, it's going to change your life. I believe God is going to take, take you from one place in your life to another place. He's going to elevate you and he's going to grow you. You don't believe me? Just wait till you get in. Trust me. And all the people in there, super friendly, godly, amazing, incredible people. We're having weekly Zoom calls where I'm going to be teaching you guys and talking to you in person. We're FaceTiming each other, basically. You're going to get to know me. I'm going to get to know you and so much more. So if you want to grow in Christ, you want to elevate and get to that next step, you can join the Patreon. Link will be in the description. I'll pin it in the comments. With that being said, don't forget to check out my merch store. I'll leave that link in the description as well. And don't forget to subscribe, like the video. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.